napolitano. Napolitano. <laughs> you know, legendary vocalist and bassist for Concrete Blonde. I mean, it's just an honor to be here. Well, thank you. And uh, the, the story we're working on is uh, kind of the, the history of music, mm -hmm. rock, you know, mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems like a lot of the fans are not finding a whole lot of new stuff. And they just keep going back to... Uh, you know, the bands that they're used to and the bands that they grew up with. And you've got some fans that absolutely love you. <laughs> and uh, so I'm trying to figure out, uh, you know, what was that winning combination? How did you Where get started? Where I fit in all this? Yes. Well, it, you're, if you're, you're talking about a 30-year career with the band, so there's been a lot of changes in the world and in us and in the industry and music. But when you say there's not a lot of new stuff, there's tons of new stuff. There's more ways to find new music now than there ever was. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to be breaking well, out. Well, what like... happens, and in, in any, anybody in marketing will tell you this, is that people always tend to go back to, that's why they sell music to kids, because no one ever forgets their their teenage summer. Right. And you're always going to go back to the music of your teenage summer. So, so nostalgia is pretty built in. You know what I mean? Once why that's why they want young people. You know, everybody will go running and screaming. Why? Why do they sell music to kids or cigarettes to kids or anything to kids? Because once you got a kid, you got it for life. Yeah. So that's just the way it works. So I, I, I know that there's a lot of music out there. You know, I'm hearing great new stuff all the time. It's, it's just almost too much. You know, between the internet and. Um, and indie radio and, and, and you know web I mean YouTube um, YouTube is, is amazing they're, yes. they're able to discover things I mean there's some serious gems back there you know and uh, so I'm not, I, I, I don't know I, it's, a, it's you must always redefine yourself and, and where you are and try to keep a, uh, it's, a, it's a real uh, delicate balance in keeping um, real like your place in the world but also knowing enough what to discard in order to maintain whatever inner voice that is that is giving you the music you know um, it, it came to a point where I if I was going to keep making music I had to move out of the city um, I, had, I haven't had a TV in a long time so I'm kind of always straddling between uh, you know living under a rock and uh, and knowing pretty much what's going on <laughs> in other places and then choosing what not to care about and what doesn't affect me and what I don't want to be influenced by. Um, and I, I guess that's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, you following your career, I mean, nobody has really told you what to do. It's a little you... while ago, but I think we fucking do it better! <laughs> It's a birthday. Right. Yeah, they tried, but uh, yeah. but even like with your videos, I mean, you record companies tell you to do one thing and you go against it and you prove them wrong. I mean, that's yeah, not not just for the sake of doing it either, because I'm aware of that aspect and uh, a rebellious personality, which to say the very least, I was raised to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Um, that you must know when you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. It simply became physically impossible, or it's always been physically impossible to be anybody else except who I am and who we are. And, and, and what is the point of success, you know, always? What is the point of it, even if you did have a hit record or you met? And it's not your music, and it's not your face, and it's not your clothes, and it's not your... Man. I mean, ha that's a good way, you know, to wind up on a shrink's couch for 30 years, you know, <laughs> and beat yourself up and, yeah. and all that. So, yeah, I have to say we, we have been right even up to a couple of years ago. You know, when we were out doing the reunion tour, the bloodletting tour, by the way, that record they wanted to reject. When I turned in that record, they wow. said, we don't hear a hit. You need to go in and record six more songs. And I basically, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucked them off. Yeah, and, the same, and, uh, same thing with the video on that one. You, the same thing with the video. They yeah. did not want to make that video. Yeah. And I, I looked, at, looked at the contract. You owe me a video. Yeah. And so we did make that, and that was ripped off wonderfully by uh, Iggy and right. uh, yeah and uh, Candy Candy yeah it was like the same video except it was Kate from B-52s and Iggy but I, I, I like what we've done and I, I think I mean even to what was it the Everybody Knows video and I'll never forget the hairdresser had just he was giving me shit because he was he had done Millie Vanilli and I'm just like he was doing all the silly crap to my hair and I threw him out got the director all upset you know this is a lot of bass for one little chick here is it Ha <laughs> 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 
I'm making it my bitch tonight. Here. <laughs> But I don't, I think it comes from a place of not having anything to lose um, and not just not caring. I have, I've never had anything to lose, you know. I came up, I've been working since I was 14. Um, I, I've had to work on my life um, and I had nothing to lose. And this I've known since I was a kid, you know, I started playing music when I was nine years old. So when people say to me, you know, they, when, you know I'll never forget, the first record came out and were, all, the, all these reviews started comparing me to all these people that I'd never heard in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great because it opened up a whole world of, wow, I did discover a lot of, a lot of things, you know. I was ma mainly, you know, a reader. I've been a reader since I was a little kid, so I was always interested uh, in words and things, you know, uh, art. I've been, I've been an artist since I was a kid, you know. Um, so it all sort of fits together in my world somehow. But the point is, is like, there is, like you asked me before we started this, um, everybody's looking for a formula, you know, and there is not one. There is no formula. Or as Sting famously said, there are no rules. That's, I mean, that's why we do this. If I wanted to live by rules, I would. And, and you know, the thing is, too, I've seen it, um, I've seen it get more, even on, on the artist side, more uptight and more, um, more, I don't want to say corporate because that's not really the word, but more like straight edge. Like this isn't a nine to five job. This is rock and roll, you know. I mean. And I smile to myself because I don't really miss my glorious past or the lips that I kiss. And I smile to myself and how easy this is, easy to break. this doesn't work out I'm gonna go back and live on daddy's money or I'll just like go back you know I have nothing to fall back on I never had anything to fall back on and um, when you have nothing to fall back on this is all I do this is all I'm ever gonna do you know or who said if you uh, love your job and you'll never work a day in your life you know um, I've paced it well enough now in the, in the old days, I did do more cooperating than I wish I would have, or I didn't know any better, you know, like when they'd stick us out on the road for seven months at a time, which is not healthy for mind or body or spirit, and, you know, by the end of seven months, we're beating the hell out of each other, and I never want to play music again, and taking off to, you know, Europe for a month or whatever, and just running around like a crazy gypsy, and, and compromising my health seriously in, in, in the process. I want to enjoy what I do. I want to enjoy my band. I want to have a good time at this. The way to do it is to pace. So um, at this point, I'm having a good time because I don't want to be away from home for more than a week out of the month ever. 
So uh, as long as I know that, it's real cool because I know I'm going to go do something. It's going to be fun. I also know I'm going home. And it's a lot more fun. <laughs> so you know, it, it really, it really does get tough when there's no end in sight, and you just, you, they got you going. And it took us a while to figure out how it worked and who was getting the money, and you know, why are we still broke? And we just worked, you know, for seven months straight, and you know, so it, it's, it's you're gonna. There's no way around paying dues. That's the bottom line. Yeah. If there's a formula that has around paying dues, no way. You got to do it one way or another. So it, it's, it's tough, you know. Um, the toughest thing is, I think, uh, is when you work with people and uh, it, you just, just add money, as a friend of mine likes to say, and watch everything go to hell. <laughs> we the whiskey in Hollywood, and we couldn't get arrested in Hollywood. We were never the coolest band in Hollywood. And then um, when the first record came out and we were all over MTV, uh, we came back and sold out the whiskey. So that was a huge deal to me. Yeah, huge. I always wanted to play the whiskey, you know. It was a big deal in L.A. And it was funny because now I go back, if, if I went and looked at the room, I go, it's so small. It's like going back to elementary school where the, the drinking fountains are big. Right. And you look and they're all small. Like I went in the whiskey like a few years ago and went like, Jesus, room is tiny. <laughs> but it was so massive at the time. It's huge to us. And I'm very proud to say we blew out the PA. Couldn't handle it. Wow. <laughs> But we did, what else was amazing? We just did China, and, uh, and that's been the highlight so far for me. I mean, we, did a, we headlined a two-day festival in Hangzhou, and there were artists from all over the world, from Taiwan, from Hong Kong, from Ireland, from Norway, Finland, and, um, and Ireland. We, and we, we, we headlined that, and we were very, very pleased to do that. That was, that was really monumental to me. There's, there's a lot of things I wish I hadn't waited to do, because I was so focused on my career, you know, so focused on keeping it going. That, there, that I did neglect a lot of personal life, you know, um, and that's why it's in balance now, you know, because there, there, I, when, I, when I'd be on the road and come back home and, like, buy presents for my little nieces and they were already grown two sizes out of them and stuff, and, you know, that really made me, that really affected me, like, you know, I'm missing a lot and, and because I'm going, 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 you know, and, um, and so, you know, not too late, I figured out how to pace it and make it work. But I did neglect my personal life for many, many years. Yeah. And I think people suffered from that. So now, now I care a lot more about that. I think a cover is the smartest thing you can do because of the way people shop for music now. They go Google a title and you're right under there uh, if you're doing somebody's favorite song. Then they're going to go see you do it. And I think that that can... Uh, open up a whole lot of things. It's not like 20 years ago when it was real essential to to write your own music. There's so much good music out there by so many wonderful songwriters that um, I don't think it hurts anybody to cover anything at all. It's not taking anything away. On the other hand, um, I think it's uh, just to to even uh, reduce that question even more. Um, is it easier now for a new band to break? I think it is. Because you have YouTube, you have media, you can stream from your house, from your living room. I mean, it's just endless what you can do out there. And the internet, you know, it's Friday. You know, you can <laughs> Friday. We love that song, by the way. <laughs> My dogs and I, we sing it on Wednesday. <laughs> I want to shout out to my two beautiful rescue horses that came to live with me over New Year's. True and Star Baby, formerly Tar Baby. Like I was going to call Matt, uh, she had an owner 25 years old. She's a beautiful, big black uh, mare. Both of them are great. And I've been working uh, horse rescue um, and wildlife rescue in the desert, which is where I live, the Mojave Desert, since uh, last summer, well, ever since I've lived there. So that's close to my heart. Animals are, are close to me, and I've seen the healing power of animals. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I think that's the most, the most important thing to me that brings me joy. So it's just conscious, you know. I'm not neurotic. I think my lighting guy had a fit because we stopped at Walmart the other day, and I'm not a Walmart shopper. But I've, con I've come down to the conclusion there are two people, kinds of people in the, in the country here. Those who shop at Walmart and those who can afford not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know. Well, it's I went to Walmart. <laughs> I went to Wally Wally World. Their faces got the right were blurred, their shirts were soaked in sweat. He's trying hard to catch that hurt, but he ain't caught them yet. Cause they ain't got a ride forever on that range of in the sky. Horses snorting fire.